uh, we're going to be looking at prayer, and we're going to look at praying for people, but also receiving prayer. And, uh, you know, as Steve had said, one of the things we want to do is we want to be excellent in this. I mean, we want to have the spirit of excellence. We want to have the spirit of grace in the church that we grow in this. You know, this is a believer's ministry. You know, and so we want to grow in this. We want to be excellent. And we want to uh, obviously do it according to God's word so that, you know, when we minister to people, we can do it in confidence in the Lord. But also when we pray for people, that people also feel safe and secure in, you know, receiving prayer from us. Amen. Amen. So, the Lord Jesus in Luke 18 and verse 1 said that men ought always to pray and faint not. And so we are to pray always. We are always supposed to be in that spirit of prayer, in that spirit of communion with the Lord. And that basically takes me to my next question. Where what is prayer? What is prayer? Initially, or in its very simplest form, prayer is when we turn ourselves toward God and we reach out toward God. Amen? We, it's an upward contact towards the living God. Now, we know, obviously, there are other people who pray to other things, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about our contact with God. Prayer is communication. Amen? Prayer is communion with God. It is fellowship. We, we fellowship with God. It is relationship, right? We relate to God. Uh, the Bible says that, you know, we can talk with God and God will talk back to us. Amen? We have this living contact, this living relationship with God. And that's what God wants for each and every one of us. Amen? Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Amen? So God wants us to hear His voice. He wants us to have this living relationship vibrant relationship with him every single day amen prayer can also be like a compass or a gps right who knows what gps is global positioning satellite systems or whatever they call them where you know when you're in prayer and you're fellowshipping with god he will reveal to you exactly where you are in your life but he will also show you the direction you need to go he will give you that direction in life when you pray, when you spend time with Him. Amen. Prayer is also, and this is one of those things where you, you know, people think oh, you're getting a bit interesting, but prayer is also a powerful force. Amen. Prayer is a, it's, it's an energy, of, I don't know how else to put it, uh, that changes our circumstances and the world around us. Prayer strengthens us, right? And prayer also unlocks the treasures of heaven for the earth. Amen. God has things He wants to release on the earth, and it is released through prayer. Amen. So let's look at some scriptures. We're going to look at a lot of scriptures. I mean, I, I think Pete is putting... Are you... You try. <laughs> you try and keep up. No, praise God. James chapter 5, and verse 17. And it says there, Elijah... And we just look in examples of prayer and how we can pray. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And James is saying, yeah, James the brother of the Lord Jesus is saying, hey, James was a guy just like us. Just, he was subject to the same things we face, the same things we'll deal with. And he says there, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Do you know that we can pray for our environment? We can pray for our weather. We can, we can be the sons of God in the earth. You know, I know there's this one evangelist in South Africa, uh, and wherever he goes... You know, if there's droughts or anything, when he prays, they get rain. He, he, by the grace of God that's on his life, when he prays, the drought is broken. Amen. So you can walk in that. It's something for us to walk in. Psalm chapter 2. And we see prayer. And the Lord saying, verse 8, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thy inheritance, and the utmost parts of the earth for thy possession. 
It's not a prayer we pray often, is it? But the Lord is saying when we ask of Him for the nations, He will give them to us for our inheritance and our possession. Amen. Second Timothy. We're just looking at examples of prayer that, that we can pray and pray for and pray through. And he says there, I exhort. In other words, I encourage you. And it's a very strong encouragement. Therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. For kings, for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God. Now, the Lord challenged my heart on this because, you know, you sort of, when you study sort of the prophetic timeline and you know where the things are going, you know, you sort of say, oh, you know, look at those guys in government. And you have this really sort of a attitude towards them, but you don't pray for them. And, and so the Lord was just challenging my heart and saying, I, I'm challenging you to pray for kings and for all that are in authority. And he says, why? Why? That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. You know, when they're making bad decisions in government and you're not praying for them, but yet you want to complain about the decisions they're making, right? Whose fault is it? It's the church's fault, right? But... One of the things that we need to realize here, and I just, I'm, I'm going to go sort of on a sidetrack here, is why do we pray for authority? Okay? How does that change what's happening in government? One of the things you've got to realize is the church. Jesus has positioned the church in a seat of authority. The Bible says that we are seated in Christ far above all principality and power and dominion. Right? He has given us the seat of authority. But the Bible also tells us in Ephesians 6... That in this world, there is a warfare going on because there are principalities and powers and forces of spiritual darkness that are influencing governments, nations, cities, neighborhoods, regions, right? And one of the things we can do is when we take our seat of authority, is we can come against these principalities and powers that are speaking to politicians, one of, the, one of the best pictures, we won't go there, e Ezekiel 28. I'm going on a sidetrack here, but bear with me. Ezekiel 28 talks to two kings. It talks to the natural man. It prophesies a judgment to the king of Tyre or the prince of Tyre. He's speaking to the man. And he says, this is the judgment. And then he goes and he speaks to the actual thing behind the man. And he says, I prophesy to you, the king of Tyre. And that's Satan. So we see that... Wherever there are prime ministers or kings or authorities or uh, natural authorities, there will be spiritual things behind them. And if we as the church do not take our place and our seat of authority and pray for those leaders, something else will be speaking in their ear. Something else will be influencing their heart. Right? And that is why the Bible tells us to pray for them. Right? It says pray for them that are in authority that we may lead quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. Amen. So that is what we do because when we pray for the Spirit of God to move in their lives, they will not be influenced by those wrong spirits. Amen. Getting back. Getting back. Amen. Another thing we can pray for is the Lord of the harvest. He tells us in Matthew 9.38, we can pray the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the field. So we can pray to God and say, Father, there is a work. We need evangelists. We need ministers. We need people who will go out into the harvest and bring the harvest in. So we can pray for that. And the Lord says, I will answer you. I will do that for you. I will send laborers into the field to bring in the harvest. It's a great thing we can pray for. Amen. 2 Kings 20, I won't read the story. 2 Kings 20, we read the story of King Hezekiah. And he is on his deathbed and Isaiah comes to him and says, get your house in order, you're, you're dying. You know, your, your time is up. And Hezekiah didn't just accept it. He turned his face to the wall and he prayed. He prayed with everything that was in him and said, God, God, 
I'm not finished. I'm not done. I, I want to do more. And he said, God, you know I've been a righteous king. I've, lived my, I've put my heart towards you. And the Lord heard his prayer. And Isaiah was walking. He was almost out. And all of a sudden the Lord says, now Isaiah, go back. He's prayed and he's asked me. And I'm, I'm going to answer him. And uh, basically the Lord gave him another 15 years. So he went from his deathbed for, and, he, and he was raised up for another 15 years. And that was prayer. And we can do the same. Now I'm not saying any of us are on our deathbed. But God, if we cry out to God, right, He will answer you. He will answer your prayer about your personal life, if your, your health issues, circumstances, situations. He will speak to you. Amen. He will answer you. So, let's look at praying for one another. The ministry of praying for one another. Amen. Let's go back to James chapter 5. I mean, at the end of this, if there's any questions or anything like that, uh, it's an open forum. We can uh, you can ask your question. Uh, as we say today, there's no there's no stupid questions today. <laughs> just just ask it if it's on your heart. Just ask the question. Amen. James five sixteen. And he says there. Let me just get back to the right page. Before. He says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. So we are to pray for one another. Amen? And this, this prayer is not being a busybody of you wanting to know what people's business are. You wanting to see your brothers and sisters in the Lord lifted up, walking in the fullness of what Jesus has for them. And then he says there that you may be healed. And then he says... Uh, the, the reason or why we pray he said the, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much and so he says when we pray for our people if we pray the effectual prayer if we pray a fervent prayer it will achieve much when we pray for our brothers and sisters in the Lord amen what makes an effectual prayer in other words what gets results when we pray amen First and foremost, it is a prayer that is prayed in faith, right? Hebrews 11.6 tells us, without faith, it is impossible to please God, right? First John chapter 5 and verse 14 and 15 says, when we pray according to His will, He hears us. And when we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know we know that we have the petition that we have asked. Amen. So how do I find His will? By His Word. I find His will by His Word. God's Word is His will. Amen. So when we pray for each other, first and foremost, we pray according to the Scriptures. Amen. Matthew 18 and 19. And here's the power of agreement. God has called us that we can stand in agreement and pray for each other. Okay. Okay, verse 18. Verily I say unto you, that whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it may be, might be, uh, be done for them. Is that what it says? No. no. It says, it shall. We have to believe this. It shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. And so part of the thing of prayer is when our brothers and sisters have a need, we come into agreement with them. And we base our prayer that we pray on the Word of God. We don't want to press it on what we feel or what we think should be. We want to say, God, what does your Word say about this situation? What is your Word saying about this circumstance? And then we can come into agreement. When I pray for people, one of the first things I will do is I will make sure I have 
that agreement, that we're on the same page. And so I will say to somebody, if they say, oh, um, you know, I need a new job, I will say, okay, well, we know God wants us to work with our hands. You know, that's, that's biblical. But let, let's, you and me, agree with that, that God is going to open a door, and we are going to thank Him right now for that door to open, and we stand in agreement. And I will start praying, and I'll say, Father, thank you. Lord, even now, I'm in agreement with my brother or my sister, and your word declares that, Father, when we stand before you and ask you anything in agreement, that, Father, your word says that you will do that for us. And so right now, Father, we ask you for a job right now. Father, we thank you that an effectual door will open for this person for a job in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, that, Lord, you give him grace, that your grace goes before him and prepares his way. Father, that your grace opens doors and opportunities for him. Father, that, Lord, his CV, as his CV goes out, it will fall into the right hands in Jesus' name. And so we'll pray along those lines. And I come into agreement, but I make sure that we're on the same page. Amen? Now, there are things we can't agree with, right? If, if somebody comes to you and goes, oh, please pray that I have success robbing this bank. You know? You can go, uh, no. No, we can't agree on that. There's no basis for that. The Bible says those who stole, steal no more. Amen. The other thing that, that we cannot do is, and, and one of the things I've had a lot of, is people want certain people to do things. So, for example, I've had people phoning in and say, I really like this guy. You know, pray that he'll like me too and we'll, you know, he'll marry me. And you go, no, you can't. No, you can't. We can pray for a godly husband for you. You know, he who desires a wife desires a good thing. He who desires a husband desires a good thing. That's Proverbs. But I cannot impose my will on another. Right? That's, that's basically, that's witchcraft. That is the definition of witchcraft when you impose your will on another. Amen. Now, your children, yes. When your children are young, you impose your will on your children. When they want to eat sweets at midnight, you go, no. You go to bed or you get in your backside smacked. You know? Or we even do, do we do that these days anymore? <laughs> I got I got lots of backside smack so but anyway probably not enough uh, but anyway we we know that we cannot impose our will on another so we cannot say oh God I pray that so and so does this right you can't pray that way you 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 it's that is witchcraft that you're almost up you're entering into the realm of the occult when you do that sort of thing but what I can do is if Somebody says, look, there's a difficult situation. I've had this where uh, the husband is interested in another woman, right? And it, it does happen quite a bit, even in churches, sadly. Uh, basically, what I will then do is I'll say, look, we cannot force him to change. God's not going to force him, but we can pray the grace and the goodness of God. The Bible says, Romans 4 verse 2, that it is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. So... I will then pray, I'll say, sister, right now, we're in agreement. I'll give her the scriptures that we're going to pray about. And I'll say, let's come in agreement. And right now, we say, Father, I just stand in agreement with my sister for Bob. Father, we thank you that, Lord, your grace and your goodness, Father, will minister to him now. Father, that, Lord, you will open his eyes. The, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2, 4, where the God of this world would try and blind his eyes from the truth, from the glorious light of Jesus. Father, we break the power of deception. We cannot force him to change. But Father, we pray that he will have eyes that see, he will have ears that hear, and he will have a heart that perceives and understands truth in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, that it is your goodness, it is your mercy, it is your grace that would minister to him, Father, that he would repent and turn from that, Father, in Jesus' name. And so you can pray in that way, but you cannot force him to change his way. Does that make sense? Even God will never force anybody. God will always uh, lead them to truth. He will lead you to what is right. But at the end of the day, He leaves you to make the decision. That's what He did in Deuteronomy. He said, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. You choose. Amen. Amen. So, on a practical side, uh, when we pray for people, obviously if it's in the church, ladies pray for ladies. Right Now, if a lady comes and she wants to get, obviously there are circumstances, but to the best that you can, always keep it. If you're in the open like this, then fine. But if you go into a room or you're in that, 
never go a lady with a man by herself. It's just excellence. Nothing, we're not saying anything is going to happen, but just for appearance, right? Just for appearance sake. So what, what you do is, uh, if, if it's a lady and a man, then a, a husband and wife or a lady and a man can go pray together for a lady or a man. Amen. So we do that sort of thing. If you lay hands, hand on the side of the shoulder or on the head, you know, sometimes you can, but before you even do that, you know, ask. Say, look, we're going to pray right now. Is it okay if I lay hands on your shoulder? It's just, we know. Look, for, what, for us who are familiar with it, you know, we know. Everybody just puts hands and, you know, spits and does all sorts of things and pray as we pray excitedly. But if somebody doesn't know, right, then you, you just ask. You say, look, can we just pray? The Bible says we lay hands on people as we pray. If they say yes, then perfect. You know, lay hands and pray. If they don't want it, then say, okay, just stand next to me and just agree with me. The important thing is not so much just the laying on of hands uh, with praying for the prayer of agreement. It's the agreement that they're on the same page as you when you pray. Amen. Does, does that make sense? Amen. So, as I said, if there are any questions, because I'm, I'm going through things very quickly. If there are any questions, please do ask. Amen. Mark 16. Let's look at the ministry of laying hands on people for receiving healing. This is a believer's ministry. This is not just for uh, a prophet or a pastor or evangelist or anything like that. Uh, verse 17, Mark 16, verse 17. He said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. It didn't say, and these signs shall follow a select few. These signs will follow them. That's all of us. We're all believers in here right now. These signs are to follow all of us. Right? In my name, you will cast out devils. Right? They will speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall by no means hurt them. Obviously, we don't tempt the Lord. It's just if it just by so happens that as Paul picked up a bush and there happened to be a, a snake in the branches he was picking up and a bit him, or if unknowingly you drink something that's poisonous, or if somebody tries to poison you. And I've heard testimonies of people try to poison somebody and they've drunk it. And as they've realized they've drunk something, they've turned to the scripture and said, Lord, thank you, you've said, if we drink any deadly thing, it shall by no means uh, hurt us. And they've been fine. Amen. And the thing I wanted us to focus on, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall recover. One of the things that we understand is that, obviously we can pray over a distance, but we understand that we have the spirit of life on the inside of us. We have the anointing of God on the inside of us. And the anointing is tangible, right? And you can impart the anointing. And so when you put your hand on somebody, you impart life to them by the Spirit of God. You impart healing to them. And so that is why we lay hands on the sick. But as I say, we know that. But if somebody is uninformed, you know, you always ask. You say, I'm going to pray. The Bible says we lay hands on the sick. So we're going to do that right now. And then you pray for them. And again, how do you pray? You pray according to the Word of God. We never, for us... We absolutely and totally believe that it is God's will to heal. Right? So we never pray, oh God, if it be your will. We never pray that. We'll always say, yes, God, this is your will. This is your will. We believe it. And so, Father, as I would pray, uh, I would stand and say, Father, in Matthew 8, Father, the scripture says that Jesus himself bore our infirmities, carried our diseases. And so right now, Father, I thank you that as I pray for my brother, as I pray for my sister, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I thank you that you already bore this, you already redeemed them from this, and right now I declare healing and life in Jesus' name. Father, you said I will lay hands on the sick, and, I, and they will recover in Jesus' name. Amen. It's, it's to understand we're not even, in a sense, asking God to heal them. Amen. It's His power and it's His glory. But we're doing the healing. You understand? We're not even praying to God in many ways to do it. We're, just, we're ministering this life. And, and sometimes we get a little uh, worried about this, you know. But 
Jesus said, I, I have given you this healing power, whatever, you know, freely give, or freely it's been given to you, freely receive. Amen. So, take it and minister life and healing. There are certain things that we are told, in a sense, not to pray about, right? Uh, Matthew 22. I mean, you say, Mike, what do you mean? I thought we'd pray for everything. When you're facing certain situations, then it is not for you to pray, but to actually do. Matthew 22. Amen. We're told to speak and to command in a situation. Verse 19. Jesus was walking along the way. We see the same passage in Mark 11. And he saw a fig tree in the way. He came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only. And he said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth or henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is this fig tree withered away? Now, Jesus answered and said, well, I'm God. You know, that's why it happened. Is that what it says? No. So Jesus answered and said unto them, verily. Now, when he's putting a verily there, he's saying, this is a sure thing. This is certainly, I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree. So in other words, he's saying, hey, you can do this as well. You can do this as well. If you have faith and doubt not, you can do this as well. But also, if you will say unto this mountain. Now, I've heard many people say, oh, he was talking about a spiritual mountain. Right? I say, well, the fig tree wasn't spiritual. Or was it a spiritual fig tree? No, it wasn't. The mountain, he was giving them a literal mountain. He said, if you do not doubt in your heart, but if you speak to the mountain... And say, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. It shall be done. It shall be done. And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Amen. Who said that? Jesus. Whose authority was he speaking by? He was speaking by the authority of his Father in heaven. Right? This is Jesus saying this. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Amen. So we need to believe that. And when we face circumstances or situations, we pray for somebody. There are certain things we pray and we bring before the Lord. And then there are certain things that we command in people's lives. And, and sickness and disease is one of those things we can command so we can come into agreement we say father thank you we stand in agreement right now in jesus name and as i pray for my brother father i declare what your word says father that you've already paid this so right now you turn your attention to the sickness if you're not even praying for the person you're turning your attention to the sickness and you say sickness come out of this person's body in jesus name you've been dealt with by the blood you've been dealt with by his stripes so right now we say to you in jesus name be removed every symptom Go now in Jesus' name. And you declare that over this person in Jesus' name. And you fully expect that what God's word says is going to come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, Matthew 16 and 19, Jesus said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Right? He gives you these keys of authority. And he said, whatsoever you bind on earth. He didn't say whatsoever you pray to the Father to bind. No, he says whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Amen. Amen. So, the next thing I want us to just look at is prophetic words and pictures. Because we do grow in this. We, we do, uh, this is something that we need to excel in and we can excel in. This is the spirit of pros prophecy is the testimony of Jesus, right? And so, we want to flow in that realm of prophecy in Jesus' name. The Apostle Paul uh, spoke about it in 1 Corinthians 14. And I encourage you, read through 1 Corinthians 14. And look at how it flows and functions in the church. 
Amen. Now, if you believe you have a word for somebody, the first thing you would ask yourself is, does this word line up with Scripture? Right? I'm not going to tell them something that goes against the will of God. Right? Now, I know that there are certain instances where it becomes very difficult. But, obviously, just ask yourself. You say, okay, I believe this is for them. Okay, does it line? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Then how do I bring this word? So, I got a word uh, for... Whoever, I, I, I've got a word now. I'll pick anybody. I'll pick Keith. I've got a word for Keith. And so how do I bring this word to him? Because at the end of the day, uh, I believe it's a word from heaven. But you've got to leave that space. So one of the things you can do is I can come to Keith and I can say, Keith, I, I have this word or this picture or what have you. And I believe it's for you. Right? And then you can say, uh, I, you know, I'm going I'm to give this to you, but you obviously can weigh it and judge it, right? And we are to do that in any case. The Bible says we test the Spirit. We weigh the Word. When, when people prophesy, the Bible says we are to judge their prophecy, right? So we weigh the Word. Amen? If it's some, now, the most important thing here is if somebody gives you a word or a picture, it should be a confirmation to you, right? Hebrews chapter 1, uh, I'm just giving you the, uh, my translation of it or whatever. It says, in times past, God spoke in diverse manners to the fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. God wants to speak to you and to me personally and so when somebody gives you a word or a picture in in uh, in, the, in the best uh, of things it should be a confirmation right it should be confirming what God has already spoken to your heart because God doesn't want to speak to you via a prophet or a priest or uh, a word he wants to speak to you by his spirit in your spirit that's first and foremost and then the word will come and the word will be a confirmation to you. Now, the other thing that can happen is sometimes God will bring a word to you if you're not listening to him or you're not hearing him. He can bring a word to you and say, you know, the Lord is saying this to you. But it is your responsibility still to weigh the word that somebody's given you and to take it before the Lord and say, Father, is this right? Now, if it's right, it will resonate with your spirit. Right? You will, you will go, yes, yes, I agree, this is right. Amen. Now, if you're not sure about the word, right, you can shelve it. Just say, I'm not sure about that. And you shelve the word. Right? You don't receive it. You don't have to accept the word. You shelve it and you say, Father, I'm not sure, I'll just leave it. And, and you hold on. Now, if it's something that somebody has spoken to you and you think, they got this basically from one of Jupiter's moons or something like that. You know, this is, this is ridiculous, this word. You can, you can politely just say, I, uh, thank you, you know, for that. I just don't know if that's for me. You sure it's for me? You know, and, and you, you just be gracious about it. And you just say, I don't know if this word is for me, but thank you anyway. But you might want to just pray and, and ask the Lord if, it, if you've got the right person here. And, and it's to understand, you know, people do make mistakes. You know, we're, we're growing. We make mistakes. We will get it wrong. Amen. And, and so we allow that grace for people to grow. Amen. If you come to somebody and you say, I want to pray for you. And they say, no, I don't want anybody to pray for me right now. Respect that. You know, just say, it's okay. Okay. If you need me to pray for you, I'm here. Uh, if, if you get offended or upset because they wouldn't let you pray for them, then you're the one with the problem, right? So allow grace to flow in the area of prayer and praying for people. Amen. Be hungry for it. God will, you know, if we are hungry for this, God will do it. Amen. Whatever we are hungry for, God will, will, will allow that to flow through you. Amen. And so like I said, we want us all to excel and grow in this. Amen. If, again, 
if, if somebody uh, is not sure or uncertain about a word they have, hold it. If, if it's for a person and you're not sure, it's okay. You know, guess what? It might come. I've had it where uh, the Lord has given me uh, a, a word to share. And you, you sit there and pray. And you, go, oh, you know, and you feel this urge. Oh, you know, I should, I should, I should. And then all of a sudden that urge goes away. You know, and you think, oh, well, uh, maybe I missed it there. And you probably did. You know, I probably did. But what happens is you just keep with your eyes fixed on the Lord and you'll be in another prayer time, another occasion. And then all of a sudden that same word will come. And then you go... Uh, yeah, okay, and then you give it. And, and uh, it'll find, oh, it was a blessing, or, or something like that. I've had a picture, one of the, the clearest ones I can remember was, and I've, I've probably shared it before, was seeing, I was praying, and I saw this person, and I, I, the actual person, reaching out his shoulder and moving it like that, and uh, said nothing, and I thought, nah, nah, you know, that's just me, maybe it's pizza from last night, or, or what have you. And somebody else came off the side and said, I see you reaching out your shoulder, and God's going to heal that shoulder. Right? And the guy said, yeah, the shoulder was an was a issue. And he basically reached out the, the shoulder like that, and God healed his shoulder. And I thought, there you go. I missed that. But the, the point was, uh, now I can look at that and go, I learned from that. And I think, thank you, God. Next time, I'm going to do that. But it's an encouragement, you see. Now, God's not going to go, well, I'm not going to use you again. Uh, you know, this or that. You just say, Father, uh, forgive me, I missed that. I was, you know, maybe a little nervous, a little fearful to give the word, you know, look like an idiot or, or what have you. But, you know, you, you, you can share something like that and just say, is this right? You know, and, and basically give people the space and the grace. If you have a picture for somebody, you know, Pray. Say, God, I have this picture for this person. Uh, I don't know what, maybe they'll know what it means, but give me the interpretation. You know? And, and, you know, if somebody gives you something that you think is, like I said, from one of Jupiter's moons or what have you, you don't have to receive it. You don't have to accept it. You, you just go, no, not for me. Thank you very much. And, and just walk on. Amen. But the reason I wanted to bring this, we are believing to grow in the things of the Spirit. We want to flow. We want to see a, a vibrant life of the Spirit in every dimension, in every area. And it's not just for a select one or two. It is for the whole church to flow in. It's for, it's, this is body ministry. And so, as I said, we bring all of this before you so that we just keep to these basic outlines. Amen. Always base your prayer on the Word. Always make sure that when you're praying for somebody, they're in agreement with you. Amen. And, uh, you know, minister in faith and in confidence that God is true to his word. Amen. Amen. Any, any questions? I don't know if I'll have the answer, but... Yes. yes. Um, some people are very angry in prayer. Um, and, and, and some people are very Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. The, the, the one thing is there is, you know, God knows the meditations of our heart. You know, he knows, he knows everything about us. And so when you can pray, uh, you can pray quietly. Uh, the thing is, I suppose, in, in the context of praying for somebody else, for, for that agreement and that prayer, obviously we can uh, lay hands on a person. But, or, but the thing is, it's when we pray for each other, you want to be able to get your connection on the same thing so that you're in agreement. So, but yeah, when you're sitting on the bench, sitting by yourself, walking around, you can be having this conversation with the Lord in your heart and, and uh, just, just praising Him. And people just think, well, look at that weirdo walking around. But at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's you and God fellowshipping with each other, flowing with each other. And that's what He wants is 
uh, as the Bible said, you know, in the beginning, God, uh, when, when he would visit Adam, he would walk with Adam in the cool of the garden. That is still God's heart, is that he will uh, visit with us and have this fellowship with us, and we just spend this time with him. And it doesn't have to be an outward. Sometimes you can talk, uh, but you don't have to. Sometimes, you, as you say, you can just, uh, you know, speak to the Lord in your heart. Amen. Any other? Yeah. Well, that's that's exactly that. You base it on on scripture. So, one of the things we can do is take of that father that the word says we pray for those who are in authority. So, Father, we thank you that Lord, even now, Father, we come against those uh, thing those the the wrong spirits or the wrong influences that may want to uh, lead him in a different direction. And so, Father, we just pray against those things. We bind those things. Father, we thank you that wisdom and, and uh, right thinking will prevail in his life. And, and just you can ask the Lord for wisdom and how to pray for him. And so what, what you are doing is you're, you're binding the, the wrong thing from speaking to him and, and leading his spirit. And uh, you're saying that his eyes are open to the right thing, that his heart and his mind is open to the right thing, to the right influence. And so... You are praying for him in that way. And so you are taking that, that seed of authority in the realm of the spirit uh, against those principalities, powers, rulers of darkness. That is why the church is to pray for them. Amen. Uh, you, like I said, read Ezekiel 28. You'll see the first 10 verses or so talk about the, the, the natural man who was the prince or the king of that nation. And then he goes on to, and he, and he speaks to them the spirit behind the man. He talks to the, the basically was Satan was the was the that was his seat at that time. So he, he sits behind those people and he influences that king. And there are spirits you, you see in Daniel when Daniel uh, was praying and uh, the angel Gabriel came with a message and it says there Gabriel was delayed what was it twenty one days because the, the prince of Persia, which was a demonic principality and the prince of, is it Egypt? One of the two. Uh, Persia and Greece. I think it's Persia and Greece. Those two demonic principalities stopped that, uh, the angel Gabriel from delivering a message. And so Daniel kept in prayer, and his prayer released uh, the hand of God to release Michael, uh, the archangel. And Michael then basically kicked their butts, and, and uh, Gabriel was, was able to... Uh, come through and deliver the message. Amen. So, in a sense, we are, we, our warfare, as it says, we're not fighting against the natural man. The, the Apostle Paul makes that clear. Our warfare is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness that influence this natural world. Amen. You can see that when you go into certain towns and cities, certain towns and cities have a different feel. You know, they just feel different because there's a whatever's ruling that nation. Now, they, now, when the enemy rules a nation, he does it subtly, right? He, he, he does it sneakily. He doesn't just go, oh, we're going to be evil and vicious and what have you. He, he subtly brings things in. And he, and he as the, you know, the, the, the picture of the frog in the pot? You know, he turns the heat slowly. And so you can see that in, in it's, it's sort of the mind games. And, and people know it works. It's like where... Uh, well, let's use Rishi, where the, this agenda 2030, are we going to get rid of petrol cars by uh, 2030? So he sees, oh, the uproar, the, the, the outcry and everything like that. And then what does he do? He goes, oh, well, we'll change it to 2035, you know? And so then everyone, oh, oh, you know, everybody's not happy, but we sort of concede that that's a victory. And so what they do is they subtly change. They're still going to do it, but... They, they, they will push for 10, and they, they're actually aiming for 5 or 6. But they'll say, oh, we're going to do 10. And then everybody has an upper, okay, we won't do 10. Let's just do 5. But they've moved it along, that 5. See, and that's what the devil does. He will push it, right? You, you'll see certain things in TV programs 
20 years ago, right? Very, very sneakily in comedies and everything like this. You look at it today, it's in every single show, right? They snuck it in subtly, so people subtly got used to it, got used to it, got used to it, and now it's in every single TV show. That's how he does it. Just a little bit in, and then he basically just pushes more and more and more, and that's how he changes societies. Until you get to the point where, obviously, you have a rise of Hitler, or you have Mussolini, or you have whatever, Napoleon. You know, he will cause events and circumstances to work to his favor where he'll cause things to happen. If that makes sense. Amen. Any other questions? Yes, sir. When you say we go to pray for the world, I can't pray for you. Why can't I pray for you? I can't. You, you can pray for him. You, you can, we can pray for, for anybody because it's, a, it's an act of, of the will. We, 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 we can be emotional about how people behave, but yet God still loves Putin. You know, God so loved Hitler that he sent Jesus to die for Hitler. Now, Hitler's probably in hell, but God still sent Jesus to die for him. And, and that's the thing. God loves everybody, right? And so... Yes, we pray for him, we, we, but how do we pray for him? That's the question. You say, Father, this man needs to come to his senses. Father, whatever evil spirits are driving his life, driving him along this path, you can come against that and, and, and bind those things and say, Father, uh, we come against that. But the, the other important thing to realize is that the Russians, the Russians, and, and I'm going off and we, we need to probably end soon, but the Russians need to, the Russian church needs to pray for Putin. Amen. We live in this nation. We have authority and a voice in this nation. Right? I can pray for things in France, but who really needs to pray for France is the church in France. They have a seat of authority. If God gives you a grace, an anointing where he says you can pray for nations, and we can pray for nations. Right? But there is a greater realm of authority because you live in this nation. You're in this territory, you can pray for it. You pray for your neighborhood. If there's wicked things going on in your neighborhood, right? You pray for those people to be saved, that the glorious light of the gospel will shine in their lives. You can bind the demon spirits that operate in those people to the point where those people are, are like, that's it. I don't know why things aren't working here. And they leave or they get saved. But our prayer, we have to get to the point where we see that our prayer is powerful that it is transformative, that it will do mighty things if we yield our prayer and our time to God and, and allow Him to move through us into circumstances and situations. Amen. And the thing is, we live in a society that's very microwave lifestyle. You know, everything, we get everything like that. We've forgotten that sometimes it is uh, the, 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 the prayer that is one, two, three hours. You know, where you're just praying and you're interceding and you're flowing. That, that does that. Amen. One of the, one of the things, and, and again, not, to, uh, not trying to say anything like that, but one of the things that I've, I've been uh, doing is before I go to sleep, uh, I will uh, walk in our kitchen floor for an hour. And sometimes, you know, when the Spirit comes, you know, you'll go two, three hours. And, and you just pray in the spirit and you think, Lord, I need to go sleep now. But you're still so, you know, the Lord just energizes you. Yeah, yeah, I like what you're doing. And he just gives you more energy. And then uh, you end up where you, you, you hardly sleep the night. But you just pray and you let the Holy Spirit, you just go where the Spirit wants to go and you flow with him. Amen. And, and so that's one of the things that, that I've been doing. When I walk all over the place, I pray in tongues. Uh, you probably see my lips moving. They probably think I'm a weirdo or whatever. I don't care, but I'll just pray in the spirit, and I say, Father, I'm fellowshipping with you. Just, just want to remember that connection. Uh, great book for those who, who want to just look at uh, flowing with the Lord continually. Uh, book by uh, Frank Lomba and Brother Lawrence called "Practicing His Presence," and uh, it's all about how you, uh, you know, you just 
get to this place where every minute of every single day there's this conscious awareness of God and, and how you just practice that, uh, his, you practice His presence. In other words, you, you get busy with things and you forget about God. No, God is with me when I wash the dishes. He is with me when I'm at work. He's with me when I'm doing things, when I'm at the gym. Uh, you know, He is with me. And your, your mind is just so conscious that God is always with you and that you can have this communion with Him all the time. Amen. Great book. I do believe it is on Amazon. And I will stop there because I know where I'm going on and I will probably just carry on and carry on and carry on. So, Father, we do thank you. Father, prayer is powerful. It is, it is one of the most powerful forces in this universe is prayer. Father, may we see it. May we know it. May we understand it, Father. Father, what you've given us in your word, the empowerment of your Holy Spirit, the name of Jesus, Father, and all of the backing of heaven. So, Father, we thank you that we will grow in this grace of prayer. We will go from strength to strength. Father, when we pray for people, we get results. Father, we want to believe for greater results, a greater measure, a greater dimension of flowing in the things of the Spirit. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, that even as we go into this week, that our eyes are fixed on Jesus. Father, that whatever we face, Father, by your grace, Father, we will come through it. We will come on top, out on top because, Lord, you are with us. And we thank you that we rejoice in that, Lord, that you are with us and that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. That, Father, you are coming back. Jesus is coming back soon. And, Lord, you said that uh, when we know this truth, when we know that Jesus is coming back soon, as you said in 1 John chapter 3, that we prepare our hearts, we purify our hearts, Lord, looking toward you. And so, Father, may we do that, Lord. We thank you for every good thing. Father, for those today, Father, who are, have maybe health issues or anything in their body, I thank you even now, Lord, by your mighty hand, I just speak to those things and I say, in Jesus' name, be removed out of their bodies. You are defeated by the blood. You are defeated by his stripes. So right now, every symptom, every pain, everything that is not right, leave right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. Your word never comes back to you empty. It never comes back to you void, but it will accomplish that for which you sent it. And so I thank you for that, for each and every one, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you guys. Have an awesome week.